Hello and welcome back to another review with me Kevin from Kevin Grant on Whiskey. This week I've got something special which well, I think is pretty special. First thing you can see it says Springbank on it but just under that it's a hand filled distillery exclusive which was gifted to me by Peter and Denise Lee and I did say I would wait and do a review on this but I got a little bit excited kind of over Christmas to get my nose in about it and try it. So I had a couple of drams out of it just to see what it's like and I don't want to give too much away so I thought why not do it today why not get some taste notes on it see what we've got it's a handful I don't know too much about it all I know is it's 58.4% ABV it's going to be natural colour and non-chill filtered for me it looks like a bourbon cask as well so we'll get it in the glass let's see what pop we get a wee squeaky one that's fine So Springbank, the tough to find distillery, bottles of this are very difficult to find even though Springbank produces about 750,000 litres of pure alcohol is what the, the capacity can be from Springbank, they only make about 30% of that, they use 30% of that so that's why it's very difficult to find even core range, 10 year old Springbank is hard to find, uh, you get the 12 year old cash trend which is hard to find, the 15 so when you see Springbank, if you can get it at good quality retail price, I would always suggest picking it up. I love the 10 year old Springbank, I think it's absolutely great, but even that's been difficult to find of late. So a capacity is so high of 750,000, but they're only producing 30% of that and selling it worldwide. It's a small, small margin of people of opportunity to buy whiskey. So these guys have been, Peter and these have been to the distillery and they've picked this up, a handful of distillery exclusive from Springbank. <sighs> what more do you want? I think it's probably the only way to maybe be sure to get yourself a bottle of Springbank is to actually go down to Campbelltown and pick it up. Campbelltown is such a historic region for whiskey, one of the capital blends of the world and back in the day they had so many distilleries but now all we have is three. They have Springbank, Glen Scotia, Kilkerran. They have three distilleries in that historic place and this for me is probably the most famous out of out of the three. Even though Kilkerran um, has been rejuvenated since 2004, Springbank is all the family within there and I believe all the staff when Springbank closes for um, weeks on end, I think they go to Kilkerran for eight weeks, Glengyle for eight weeks and produce there. 1828 is when Springbank was founded, so it's been around for a long, long time. I think they were the very first in 1999 to ever produce the world's first organic, fully organic whiskey as well. So got cool we accolades to the name, but they still have all this amazing quality history. I have a little bit of my 10 year old left, which I'm scared to finish because I'm going to struggle to replace it. This is going to be the next in line. So this will probably take me a while to finish. This will probably go to the back of the shelf um, out of the way and be used for sharing with everyone because well we'll get into the tasting probably you can see where I'm going with this I think you already know I quite like this one uh, but I've just never sat down and really went through the the tasting notes with it and I remember the first little pour again sometimes it's very tight it can be that way but now it's been open for maybe four or five weeks now I'm going to have a little bit better and feel like it's opened up to me. So this is what we've got in the glass. It's a very, very light colour. Age-wise, we don't really know, but from colour, I'm going to suspect it's going to be slightly younger. Not a, not super young, but slightly younger, just from the colour, maybe a second fill bourbon as well. Just something along those lines, but it's a little bit more quieter and we're going to get the real quality backbone of what Springbank is, how that new mix spirit comes through and how it interacts with the cask, with that Campbelltown note. Does it have that briny, salty, slightly dunnagey taste to it? Maybe sometimes you get a little tiny bit of sulphur coming through in certain ones, but let's see what we get on this. Let's get it on the nose, get it on the palate. A little bit of water here as well to, to calm it down, just for the ABV to see if anything changes. So first things first, on the nose, On the nose, I get straight away as a uh, syrupy fruits. When you buy your tin fruits, it's got the syrup in there. It's that tropical note to it. 
soft, I would say maybe soft custard. That saltiness comes with that little tiny bit of brine. Beachy, sandy, soft salts coming through it for sure. So briny fruit, tropical briny fruit, that syrupy fruit, soft custard I think is, it's a weird one. The brine, the salt, that coastal hit. Coast is probably the best way to describe it. The ADV, you can definitely get that. You know it's high ADV, it's coming through for me. It's oily, and just looking at the glass there, the legs, they're dripping very, very slowly. They're coming down very slowly. You're going to get a lot of longevity on the palate with this one. So we're getting tropical, we're getting salty, coastal, briny. There's so many different avenues of flavour coming through and for smell on the nose. We'll get it on the palate and see where we go with this one. Slange everyone. There's spice there, slightly drying oak hit to it, soft bourbon notes. Salty still stays there, that salty to sip. That coastal hit, the sweetness slightly comes away from what I got on the nose, that real syrupy note takes away from the more spicy finish, the drying finish from it. This is complex, this is wonderful, this is different. It's lasting, it's there. It's a, it's a dram that you can take a sip and you don't have to return for another flavour hit for a bit of a, for some time. This would take me a while to finish that dram because I'm not chasing a flavour. I'm not chasing that the, the taste of it because it's it's strong. It's got a kind of thickness to it, if that makes sense. It's like you feel it in your teeth. Soft, gritty. That wee bit of salt's coming through again at the, the end. That wee bit of brininess, that Campbelltown... DNA, the Springbank DNA. I'll go for a wee sip and then I'll add a wee bit of water. It's dry. Spicy, oaky, soft, sweet bourbon coming through. I would say your your kind of softer notes of it's trying to be sweet, but I think the dryness and the saltiness is coming through. That briny note, that beach. I can't get kind of beach out the way that walking in the beach, you get the sand and the water combining smell. If that makes sense is what I'm getting there. So I've put a few few drops of water in now. Let's see what that's going to do. As we see the ABV on this one is 58.4. Might doubt it slightly to give us a little different uh, taste, a different complexity. But I do find this has got so much going on, so many different avenues, which is amazing. It's not a one track pony. It's got, it can do, it can do loads. It can cover lots of bases. I don't get any, don't get any smoke, don't get any peat. Sometimes with a springbank, you'll get a very, very soft lingering. And I don't know if maybe the ADV is too high that I'm missing that. I would say now with, with the drops of water, maybe my nose is a little bit better because just diving in there, I'm not getting a full alcohol hit. It's maybe I'm just a bit more climatized to, to smell in the whiskey. As it's softer, it's not as sweet now. It's probably more... It's coastal, it's more coastal now, that brine coming through. Yeah, salty sea water coming through. Just if you if you've been to Campbelltown, you just stand there and you can just get that smell. When you're at the pier at the pier just sitting there, it's along those lines. But imagine eating syrupy fruit pun it out of tin whilst there and put all that together in one. That is probably what I get in this glass. Mm. 
maybe ice and sugar or something. That's where you've got that kind of bourbon cask I'm getting from. Sometimes with a good light bourbon cask, it's more ice and sugar that I'm getting from it. I think that's what it could be from that, that sweetness too. And we'll try this in the palate now with a little bit of water and then see how we go. I could smell that for days. Coastal, piney, spicy, dry, softer notes of syrupy fruits coming through. That's more in the backdrop now, not in the forefront. The oak kind of goes away and it's staying dry. That The wood's not forefront anymore. And again, that could be from the part. It's the first dram, it's, it's cast strength, it's 58.4%. So... I think my palate's just starting to get used to it. I've not had anything before to kind of prepare the palate. I've just went straight in with, with, with the cast strength, which is great again. It's... This is a hand fill. This is something, when I usually see hand fills, I believe that they are put there for quality and not for we're going to struggle to sell this and, and bottle it. I think it gets put there any whiskey distillery you go to and there's a distillery exclusive, a hand fill that you can pick up from there and do yourself, is always going to be quality. And for me, this is quality. It's stunning. It's, it's probably the best way to describe it. It's absolutely stunning. I love how there's not much to it. I love how there's no tasting notes to it. It's to an extent going blind for it. We just know the distillery. We don't know the age. We don't know the cask makeup or, well, I don't anyway. But it's just quality. Uh, I love smelling it. I love the, the quality on the palate. I love the the, the aftertaste to it. It's, it just hits everything. You've got the sweetness, you've got dryness, you've got spiciness, you've got salt. You've, you've hit everything on the kind of flavour circle, if that makes sense with this one. And the sad thing's going to be that once this is finished, it's never coming back. I suspect by the time... I, I get myself back to, to Campbell Town. There'll be a new hand fill sitting there ready to go, and I probably will pick that up if I do go. But again, thanks everyone for tuning in. This has been quality. I've really enjoyed it, I think you can tell. Everyone that's subscribed, thanks so much. I can see a wee couple going up here there. So if you're new to the channel, thanks for joining. Weekly content comes out every single Friday. Well, I'll do my best to get it out every Friday. If you've not hit subscribe already, just do it. It's free. It helps the channel. Um, on a side note, I've got a whiskey festival that I'll probably attend on the 11th of March in Stirling. Uh, the Stirling Whiskey Festival is run by the Scottish Gantry. I'm going to be heading to that probably session one. I think by the time this video goes out, tickets should be put on sale from the Scottish Gantry website and maybe other platforms too. But I'm going to be heading to that. Uh, because it's local to myself, I've got the day off, everything, all the stars have aligned, so I'll be heading there, and I'm hoping maybe these guys will pop along, and if they do, I'll probably be hanging about there for most of my day. But again, thanks for everyone for tuning in. I'm going to go and sit back, finish this speed ram, probably pour another one of it as well, because it's quality, and see if I get any new tasting notes with it. But as always, I've been Kevin from Kevin Gantt on Whiskey. Join me next week. Let's talk whiskey. Sludge.